Harry Potter is a staple of childhood, at least for my generation. And then with being British on top, it just means that it's now a large part of the culture too. If you pop down to London, you'll be able to pop into the Warner Brothers studio and see the making of the Harry Potter tour. So you can say that the majority of people at least know of the Harry Potter verse. With that fresh in your mind, you should now know that the Hogwarts Legacy game has been released. And in the first few days, it's hit ridiculous heights. The game launched officially on February 10th, but it was available for 72 hours early access if you had brought the deluxe edition of the game. This meant that on the 9th of February, the game managed to be the highest watched single player game ever on Twitch, at least at the point of this video being released anyway, with a grand total of 1.28 million people watching the category, the day before the official launch. But then the real question stands, is the game actually worth it? Are people enjoying playing it as much as they are enjoying watching it? With about 20 hours of Hogwarts Legacy under my belt, I thought it's about time that I can chime in. So when you pull yourself into the game, you have to start off in the same way that you do in most RPG games. You have to create your own character. And this is something that really does help with the immersion of the game. However, it's honestly just not the best. There seems to be a big lack of customization when it comes to creating your character at the start of the game. You get different outfits that you can style your character in a multitude of ways throughout the main game, but when it all starts, you're left with some rather bland options. And the main reason why this concerns me is that even the new Saints Row game, which is notoriously told online for being an absolutely terrible game, has more customizability for your main protagonist than the Hogwarts Legacy does. It's not the be all and end all if I'm being completely honest, but off the gate it didn't really seem to make a great start or a great first impression for me. But then we get into the story. So the game starts you off as a fifth year student at Hogwarts with next to no magical experience. You find out that you've got some sort of ancient magic running through your veins and that that's basically the setup for the entire story. It's really engaging and they've managed to level out the same balance they have inside of the films. The classes get done in good timing and there's still a lot of reasons to carry on doing the side quests. With large open world games, it's really easy to get sucked into the main story and just ignore a lot of the side content that there is to do. But they've done a brilliant job with pacing. There's enough urgency so that the story will go on at a reasonable pace without you feeling like you need to carry it on constantly, without touching any other content in the game. None of the story really seems to be going slowly, there's a lot of side quests and all of the stories inside the game are told incredibly well. The writing is honestly just magnificent. There seems to be very little filler from where I stand. However, my only real criticism over the quests is that the game does start off quite slow. The tutorial is great for showing you how to play, but I feel like when it comes to the replay ability, it's going to feel kind of on a similar level to Skyrim with that opening cutscene. Hey, you. You're finally awake. But realistically, what good is an incredible story if the world around it doesn't follow suit? Luckily in this instant, the world is massive. But not only is it massive, it's just gorgeous. Every single part of the world they've created seems to fit exactly where it should be. You have the grounds of Hogwarts, which by the way, are just as confusing as they always seem to be in the movies. I think the only real difference is that the stairs always go to the right place. We don't have to deal with a constant moving around. There's also full access to Hogsmeade. This is the quaint little village located just outside of the castle grounds. Throughout the game, this is basically used as a small little shopping hub. There's loads of quests and stuff that you can find there as well, so it becomes way more useful the further through the game that you actually get. Then there's the rest of it. Pretty much the entire Scottish Highlands, and my god is it beautiful. They've gone and added a few extra villages into the Highlands to just kind of add more life into such a vast open space. And honestly, I think it's gone a long way. That's before they've even touched in adding the dungeons, the trials, and everything else that is gracing this wonderful world. But one of my favourite sections of the map is the Forbidden Forest. I'm not a big fan of the ridiculous amount of spider nests that are in there, but it's also a small price to pay for something that looks so damn good. It's brimming with life, and rumour has it there's a unicorn in there that just sits and ponders around. I can tell you now that it's been one of the best experiences of the entire game for me so far move on to performance. The game's not perfect. There's a few glitches and issues with it, at least there is on PC anyway. I've had multiple stutters and issues with textures just not loading in, but if I'm being completely honest, it's a refreshing thing to have. 
Most games right now are coming out just broken and unplayable. But just having a few frame rate issues that seem to be mostly isolated to PC just means that the devs have really been trying with this title. Sometimes the stutters can make the world seem a bit weird, and they have definitely had an effect on the combat, but I'll get into that a little bit later on. But I really don't think it has taken that much away from the actual game, or the world that it sits in. I've settled for playing the game on medium settings. Despite my PC being capable of doing more, I thought it would be slightly safer as a way to just make sure I'm not taxing the system too much. And to be honest, most of the stuttering has been reduced massively because of this. With that being said though, most of the gameplay has been recorded before the day one patch. So a lot of these issues could have just been solved by now and I'm just unaware of it. I've also been playing the game over on the Steam Deck. This runs on low settings, but even there, it's still amazing to play. I would say it's a much better idea to have the game on low on the deck than it is to wait for a few months and play it through on the Nintendo Switch, as I'm honestly terrified to see how the world gets destroyed using the now ancient Nintendo hardware. But anyway, as I was trying to say earlier, the combat system in this game is honestly one of my favourites in all of the games that I've been playing recently. It isn't overly complex, but it was also nowhere near just being a hack and slash. You have your basic attack, a block that also kind of works as a parry, and then a dodge. The attack and the dodge just kind of work how they do in every game. There's nothing really special, but I will say that the dodge is very smooth. I'm talking Souls-like smooth. It's very reminiscent to the Batman Arkham series. If there's red on your head, move out of the way, and if there's yellow on your head, you've got a block. There's 27 spells in total, most of which are slottable spells. These are the ones that you will mostly use during combat, and some not so much combat. The others are kind of passive, like Alohomora is one of them, same as the basic attack and the block. All these spells that are slottable have colours that coincide with the kind of attack that they actually are. For example, the purple spells are four spells. You also have the ability to use some of the unforgivable curses. You have the opportunity to become a dark wizard. Something that we all say we would never do if we were physically in that situation. However, this is a video game so we can quite literally just do whatever the hell we want to. I would say that that is within the physical constructs of the game, but it does seem like they're willing to let you be a little bit naughty if you did want to. My only real qualm with the combat is I feel like the game always outnumbers you. Which generally isn't terrible because, you know, you're a powerful fifth year, right? Yet the spells we have access to are pretty much all single target spells. It seems a little bit weird that wizards don't have access to any form of AoE spells. The closest we've got to, really, is probably just the upgraded version of Incendio, where a very small ring of fire comes out around you, basically only really affecting those in melee range. And for a game with no melee, there's really no reason to ever be that close to someone. I do think that the combat is one of my favourite parts of this game. From the start, it doesn't really seem to be too prevalent, but as you progress and you get more into the swing of the gameplay loop, it does become a lot more of a prominent feature. But then we get onto one of my least favourite parts of this game. So if you've been on this channel before, you may have seen another video that I made, about how much I hate open world games. And if I'm being honest, this one also feels like it's got the same issues that most of them have. There's way too many collectibles. I mean like, way too many. I understand trying to push a game for longevity, but sometimes it's, it's just a little too much, you know? There's a lot of space in this game to fill, and a lot of it seems to be filled with things that seem more or less pointless. They all give rewards, so it kind of makes sense, but seriously, 144 field guide pages in just Hogwarts alone? That's a lot of legwork. It's not just these though. You have the Didalian keys, I'm probably not saying that right, the demiguy statues, the eye chests, the astronomy star thingy jigs, and that's without bringing in all of the Merlin trials and even the weird maze things, which, by the way, they are really cool. I don't want it to seem like this is all just a complaint. Some of the aspects are great, it's just there's a lot of them. The point is, this game has way too many collectibles, and as much as I do get it, I think a lot of these really don't need to be in the game. I get them from a story perspective, at least the trials and the field guide, but my god, I don't want to have to go around and collect all of these pages, like there just really isn't enough time in the day. And then there's something that's really weird. 
A lot of people who I've spoken to about this game have all been saying the exact same thing, and they all seem to prefer playing this game using a controller. See, it's very rare that I find a game that I prefer to play controller over keyboard and mouse, and to be honest, I can kinda see where they're coming from. The keyboard controls for this game are very reminiscent of MMO controls, which to be honest, for me works really well, but I can also understand that people don't find that easy to control, and that's why they turn to controller. I've played the game a lot on the Steam Deck, so I do think the controller version is quite nice to play, but personally, I do like the mouse and keyboard. I just rebind the block and the dodge to the side buttons on the mouse, and honestly it works a treat. To be honest, this game seems incredibly polished for a brand new release, especially with the state that games have been releasing over the last few years, and it really is just a breath of fresh air. With a few optimization errors on PC, I do think it will be sorted out over the next few weeks, and come to be one of the best games to be released this year, which is mad considering that it's February. I hope in the next few months to see some DLCs coming out for this game. The addition of Quidditch would be insane to see, and possibly some multiplayer aspects to come. Or even a new game altogether which can just bring in some multiplayer aspects like dueling each other in the arenas. I hope you've enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like on it if you've enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new, and let me know down below if I've missed anything out, and you know, just to tell me the part of the game that you're even most excited for, or have enjoyed the most. Take it easy. Thank you.